Is this okay, brother? My God, my God. No wonder Jeremiah said, it's like a burning fire that's shut up in my bones, praise God. I feel this fire. I feel this fire. It's all in my feet. Brother Scott, can you feel him in the back? Can you feel him on this side? My God, can you feel him in your living room? My God, thank God. Sister, you keep that music coming because let me tell you something. There's nothing like having some music in a service. Amen. Here to give me a chance to breathe a little bit. My God, I need to bring you to the tent with us. My God, my God, I love Jesus. You know what I've got in my belly right here? And every time I get this feeling, somebody's fixing to be delivered. There's people that walk in the house of God every day with chains on them. There's people that's walk, that walks in the house of God every day that's in prison. It's just okay, brother. There's people every day that walk in the house of God and they're bondage, they're in bondage, they're in prison in their own house. Is there anybody in here tonight that they that loves Jesus say, praise the Lord? There's nothing can hold back the power of God. If you want it, you can get it. Look at your neighbor and say, if you want it, you can have it. Hold up, my Sunday hit my most, I tell you. Is this okay? Praise God. If you come to the tent tonight, I guarantee you God will do something for you. But he's going to do something for you right now. In the name of Jesus. You that's in the house of God, stretch forth your hands at these cameras. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to obey God because I hear the Holy Ghost speaking. In the name of Jesus, be ye healed. Be ye saved by the power and by the blood of Jesus Christ. You might say, Brother Holmes, you don't know what I've been through. I'm so far in sin, I don't know how to come out. Listen, Jesus met the lady at the well, and what did he tell her, praise God? He said, if you'll, he said, if you'll drink of this water, I, my God, I feel like running in the house. I may leave from here and run to Pembroke. Amen, praise God, i tell you what. My God, some of us need to be set on fire. I'm getting ahead of myself now. He, he said, listen, if you drink of this water, he said, you'll thirst again. I've drunk a lot of Jack Daniels. My favorite beer was Budweiser. I used to call it Hellweiser. Because you get to drink it, you're going to fight hell. Demons is going to be inside of you. You're going to get in a shootout. You're going to get in a fight. You'll stay up all night and can't get enough of it. It's just okay, preacher. It's just all right. Amen. Praise God. But Jesus told the lady to well. He said, listen, you drink of this water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. Praise God. Amen. It's every day. It's like a refreshing. Drinking from the rivers of Jesus Christ. Look to your neighbor and say, are you thirsty? My God, my God. What about Sunday? Hey, my most, I tell you. You that's at home today, you can feel this power. I know you're feeling. I know you're feeling the anointing of God right into your living room, right into your car. I know there's people right now. You just come from out to eat, your belly's full, and right now the flesh is telling you to go home and lay down. What you need to do is raise your hands and give your God some praise. Amen. We've been asleep too long. Look at your neighbor and say, We've been asleep too long. What about Sunday? I rebuke cancer. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke bone disease. What about Sunday? Hey, my most I tell you. I rebuke my gram headaches. In the name of Jesus, right now, come out. In the name of Jesus, and be ye healed by the power, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then when Isaiah picked it up in Isaiah 53 and 5, he said he was wounded. My God, I wish I had some help in this house. He said, I was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Give him praise in the house of glory. I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Could have been dead, should have been dead a long time ago. Been shot three times. 
never spurred to walk out of prison, had a life sentence, and ain't got time to tell you the whole story. But all I know, that one day they told me to pack my stuff. My God from heaven. I'd have died in prison, but one day they told me to pack my stuff. I was in federal prison in Pennsylvania, and they told me that I'd never see daylight again. And one day my wife got a call. My God, I wish I had a witness in this house, praise God. But the Lord had done it told me. He said, son, I'm sending you back home. And he said, you're going to finish what I started in you a long time ago is I got a witness in this house. I feel the power of God so strong. I'm about ready to run in this house. I can't take it. It's the power. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look to your neighbor and say, get out of my way and let me just shout just a little bit. Look to your other neighbor and say, I feel God in the house of glory. Got a phone call one day and said, listen, roll your stuff up. They said, you're going home. They said, you're going home. Matter of fact, the man said it was over. Look at your neighbor and say it's over. Look at your neighbor and say it's over. That's what the Holy Ghost just spoke to me here. To tell you, and you that's watching my internet, you that's watching my television, the Holy just Ghost just spoke to me and told me to tell you that it's over. Look at your neighbor and say it's over. It's over. Being sick, complaining, grumbling, upset, ill, and don't know what to do. You got high blood pressure. The devil's been trying to kill you for years, but God told me to tell you that it's over. Look to your neighbor and say it's over. Now, God, I'll, I'll tell you what. I feel the Holy Ghost, amen. Brothers, listen, you just got to look over me. I'm going to read some scripture in a minute. But I just feel the Holy Ghost. And I don't know, this may be my last time I ever preach here. But since you gave me this opportunity, I appreciate it. But I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. And you just watching my television, internet. I don't know how many countries. I think the brother said 200 countries. But you just watching today, there's people literally that's watching us that's demon possessed. They's hooked on pornography. Oh Lord, don't go there, Brother Horns, but I'm going there anyway. You're hooked on pornography. You can't lay your phone down for one minute. You're looking at all kind of stuff and you'll wonder why you're going through the hell that you're going through. You say, Brother Holmes, you shouldn't have said that. You want to be free today? You want to be free right now? I used to be in bondage, but Jesus set the captivity free. No one he picked it up and he said, I'm a being anointed to preach this gospel to the poor, to those that's in prison, to the captivity, to those that's bruised, to those that's blinded, to those that don't know, don't know which way to go, to the hungry, to the thirsty. Jesus said, I've been anointed to the preach to those that's in bondage. you in bondage today, and you can come out by the hand of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He shed his blood. The devil is a liar. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm preaching to you, but I'm preaching to thousands. I'm preaching to a hand few here, but I'm preaching to thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. And you can go free today. Jesus said, whom the, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Do you want to be free today? Look at your neighbor say, I'm free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You just watching by internet, television. Maybe you got a family member that's headed to prison. Maybe they're facing life in prison. Y'all gonna get some calls on this, brother. Sister, just okay. 
Maybe you got a husband that's in prison. Maybe you got a wife that's in prison. God told me to tell you that he has no respect of a person. That if he got Paul and Silas out, you don't hear the preacher today. If he got Paul and Silas out, he'd get your husband out. Matter of fact, he'd get your boyfriend out. Matter of fact, he'd get your girlfriend out. But when they get out, you need to get married. You say, oh, preacher, don't get her. Oh, yes, you do, praise God. Well, you can receive the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. When me and my wife got married, when we got saved in 1991, my God, I wish I had some help in the house of glory. Is this okay, sister? You come tonight at a 10 and I finish the rest. But I'm going to say a little bit now. When I got saved in 1991, I got my wife here with me today. I told Millard Mina over there at the Church of God, the Silent Tree Church of God. I said, Brother Mina, I said, listen, you led me to Christ. Now I want you to marry me and my fiance. We'd been together then probably seven, eight years. But God saved us the same Sunday, the same day, at the same time. Mill and Mayna led me to Christ. Sister Loreen Scott, both of them is in heaven today. She led my wife to Christ. Brother Mill and Mayna led, led me to Christ. And a month later, we got married. Hooked up by Sunday and Mambo Shataya. And then God's blessing. You don't hear this preacher today, he praised God. Then God's blessings started pouring in, praise God. When you get it right, he said marriage is honorable. My God, I don't know why I'm going there, but the Holy Ghost knows. He said marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Is I got a witness in the house of glory. People think they can shack, they think they can run around in a whore and get God's blessings, but it will not happen. It will not happen till you get it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, don't quit shouting now. The sister said, go ahead. Other words, if you're holding the brakes, take your foot off the brake. Look at your neighbor and say, take your feet off the brake. I don't know how much longer I got, but I feel like preaching all night. I told my brother the other night, I said, son, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. I can't eat. I can't sleep. All I want to do is worship this man called Jesus. You think you need a bunch of food to eat? You think you need eight meals a day? But all you need is the word of God. It's time for the church to fast. It's time to tell the church to pray and seek God's power, to seek his anointing. He said the harvest is ready. The fields is white. I wish I had some help in the house of glory. I'm going to shout right by myself. Y'all may get a call and say, don't ever get that preacher back. But see, I'm not on your payroll. I'm not on nobody's payroll. I don't want nobody to try to write me a check and hold me under no denomination. Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Denomination is fine, but it's not for me, praise God. No wonder Paul said, I wish I could preach just a little bit. God strengthened my body that I can get this message out. I know how some of you women felt when you was pregnant and carrying your baby. Because I'm pregnant with this message. And I hear the Holy Ghost say, push. Look to your neighbor and say, push. My God, I wish I had a witness in this house. How many mamas is in the house? Do you know all about it? I don't know about having no babies, but my wife told me how bad it hurt. I got two kids at home, so I gotta know something, amen. First thing the doctor tell you when you get there, you don't wanna hear this preacher preach to you, but I'm gonna preach you how. First thing the doctor tell you to do, I did they strap you down in the bed and say push. Push, look at your neighbor and say push. Push, push. Push the devil out your way. Come on, somebody. Do I have a witness 
in the house of glory, amen. Listen, you're pregnant today with a message. God has pregnated you with the word of God. It is time for you to go out in the highways, in the byways, and to preach about Jesus. He's soon to come. Give him praise in the house of glory. Sister, you just keep playing that music. Cause they, you know what? She's anointed. See, she's anointed. You hear that music? It's helping the word to go out. No wonder David took his robe off. You don't hear this preacher. My God from heaven, I feel like preaching. Praise God, sister, stand up in the back and raise your hands. Praise God, this sister right here. She come under the tent how many days ago, baby? Tomorrow be two weeks. She come under that burden down. Broken hearted. Can I get a little more feedback on this mic here, brother? Can you help me just a little bit? I don't know how long I got, but I'm obeying the Lord. Is this okay? Brother Scott, is this okay? I got my cousin back there in the back, praise God. I've got some witnesses around the house. Come on, somebody, and give him praise in the house of glory. See, these women's got a right to praise God because they was lost just like me, just like you was. And maybe some of you watching my television, you were lost, but you can get to know this man that's called Jesus. But this young lady come under the tent. I said, well, we, we're not having service. I said, I'm trying to get the tent right. Storm had came or something. Wasn't no generator hooked up. The lights wasn't on. Me and my wife was in there cleaning and doing stuff. Matter of fact, thank God for my wife. I love you, baby. We was in there moving around stuff. And after a while, people started coming. I was sitting there, I had my shorts on, I had my bike brake that I wore. I had a towel around my neck. I said, we're not having service tonight. The Lord said, yes, you are. He said, yes, you are having service. He said, listen, you pray for these people and you tell them about me. This lady was broken hearted. Her heart was hurting. I laid hands on her and prayed with her. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ two weeks ago as our personal savior. Friend, listen, people need Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, do you need Jesus? She's been to the service about every night. Her mama's laying over on the floor praising God. And there's so many more that's been blessed. My brother-in-law was there the other night and he cut his phone on. We went live on the internet. I don't know how to even about cut a full moon. But you know how to do it. I don't know. But he cut it on the internet and got the film in the service. A girl called back. She said, where's that tent revival at? She said, how do I get over there? Bless God, the next night she come, she gave her life to Jesus. Will God use the internet? Will he use the television? Look at your neighbor and say, God can use anything. If he can use a donkey to speak, if he can use a jackass to speak, come on somebody, come on somebody. God spoke to a horse, told the horse to speak, and did he speak, Brother Scott? If God can use that, he can use these phones and internets, cameras, cause he'll take all of that, what the devil meant for bad, and he'll turn it around for his glory. I wish I had somebody in here to praise God. My God, my God, I don't know what time it is, but if I'm getting a little short on time, somebody just say, ho, oh, preacher. I don't hear nobody hollering, so I'm gonna go on. Listen, sister, you go ahead and play. Listen, right before I got over here, the wife wanted me to stop over there at the store. I pulled in over there at the store. See, the anointing follows you everywhere you go. 
Now this is going to help somebody. When the devil tell you you're not anointed, tell him he's a liar. Sister, you're anointed. Amen. I got out and walked in the shore. People was in there waiting in line. All of a sudden I heard somebody holler. Lord, there's the preacher in the house. I turned around and looked. I said, praise God. I said, the Holy Ghost is in this store. Praise God. Because I brought him in here with me. Look to your neighbor and say, oh, you feel with the Holy Ghost? There were some sisters in there. And one of them knew me for a long time ago, me and my wife. And all of a sudden she looked at me and she said, preacher, please remember me in prayer. My God, I ain't even read nothing out of the Bible yet. Y'all gonna have to get me back to really preach. Somebody said, praise the Lord. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. No wonder David said, I feel like running through a troop and leaping over a wall. I feel God's power. I feel his anointing. I feel, hey, I feel God's anointing. I feel 12 foot tall and 300 pounds. I walked in the store and the conversation took place and she looked at me and she said, Preacher, will you please remember me in prayer? I said, baby, I'm going right across the swamp over here and I'm going to be preaching here in a few minutes. And I said, you know what? I want you to tune in. She said, listen, brothers. She said, we watch it all the time. So you're a blessing. You're anointed. You're anointed. When you're behind this pulling and got this mic, those people's watching, those people's listening that need help. There's help on the way to your house. Look to your neighbor and say, there's help coming to your house. My God, my God, my son Sam in Winston Salem, and the other night he called. He said, Dad, I've seen you preaching. He said, I've seen you preach and shout all over that tent. My God, the power of God is flowing all over the world. My God, I might as well finish now. I'm gonna step into the deep. It's just okay, Bishop. It's just okay, preacher. Are you having fun? My God, the world will tell you, the devil will tell you there's no fun in serving Jesus. I guarantee you there's fun in it. Matter of fact, he told his disciples, I'm fixing to go somewhere else now. He told his disciples in the 14th book of John, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if it was not so, I'd have told you so. But he said, I go and prepare a place for you. And he said, where I go to prepare a place for you, he said, I will come back and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said in verse five, he said, Lord, what is the way? What is the way? That's the way the world was looking. What is the way? Is it in drugs? Is it in alcohol? Is it in crown roar? Is it in pornography? It is in cheating and whoring and lying? Where is it at? Where do you, Jesus, where are you going? We've been following you. We've been following you all these years. Now you're getting ready to leave us. Thomas said in verse five, he said, Jesus, show us the way. My God, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the third man. It's running all up down my back. Thomas said, Lord, what is the way? And many of you heard it preach. And if God gives me the strength, I'm going to preach it. Amen. In verse 6, the 14th chapter of John, this is what Jesus said. He said, Thomas, I am the way. And I am the truth. See, sister, you got the truth now. Amen. The devil, he's a liar. He can never tell the truth. He'll never go to heaven again. Jesus, God kicked him out. 
long time ago, praise God. But anyway, getting back to the 14th chapter of John, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The devil lied to me for years. I was lost. My God, I wish I had a witness in this house. It's amazing how Jesus can reach into the darkness. I'm speaking to somebody right now. How Jesus can reach into the darkness and snatch you out. And put you in this marvelous light. He told them on through the chapter. He said, now peace. This is for somebody. The Holy Ghost, give me time, I'll read some scripture, but if not, it'll be fine. Call the words in my heart. What I'm giving you is the truth. He went on through the chapter, he said, listen. He said, I'm gonna give you peace. That's what you need right now. It ain't in Percocets. It ain't in Lord sets. It ain't in Darby sets. It ain't in the devil set. It ain't in the television. I wish to God I had a witness. Brother, is this okay? Cool. In the name of Jesus. Hold up a Sunday here, Mamosataya. Hold up a Sunday here, Mamosataya. My God, he said, I'll give you peace. That passes all understanding. He said, not as this world give it. It ain't in Jack Daniels. It ain't in Crown Royal. It ain't in gambling. But it's in Jesus Christ. The son of the living God, amen, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. I feel God all in this house. You say, Reverend Holmes, you keep preaching like that, they won't invite you back. You don't worry about that. If God wants me back, the Holy Ghost open every door around this building. But I believe these are men of God up here, and they know when the real anointing and the real power of God is flowing. My God, it is flowing right now. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil is a lie. Jesus said, I'll give you peace that passes all understanding. Otherwise, when you go home, I wish, brother, I don't know which way to go with this camera. But I'll tell you what, I feel like running. You just watching today. If you want this peace, you can have it. You can take your Xanax and you can go to sleep. You can take your muscle relaxer and I'm not here to preach on medicine. But I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. You can take a Xanax and sleep all night. I'm preaching to somebody and you get up the next morning and hell will still be in your house. The devil will still be standing over your bed, hounding your life, tormenting your family. The devil is a liar. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil is a liar. Say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Give him praise in the house of glory. I feel God all in this place. I myself. I'm going to preach you now. Is this okay, sister? Is this okay, Bishop? Is this okay? It's not in medicine. And I'm not preaching against it. If you got a prescription, use it. But if you're running down other people's medicine, then you're going to have a problem. Is this okay? You say, Brother Home, don't go there. The Holy Ghost carried me there. But you can take sleeping medicine and sleep all night. I'm speaking about peace. I was fixing to read over there when Jesus made the lady at the well. And he told us, he said, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. Then the Holy Ghost came into the 14th chapter of John. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For my father's house and many mansions. There ain't but one true peace. I said there ain't but one true peace. And if the devil's anywhere around this place, I want him to hear the man of God. 
There ain't but one true peace. Look at your neighbor and say, there ain't but one true peace. And that's in the blood of Jesus. When they carried him up to God, God was healed. And they hung him high and hung him wide. God give me the strength to preach this message. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. When they carried him up to God, God was healed. One place they call it skull. The next place they call it Calvary. But anyhow, they carried him up there and they nailed him to a tree. The Bible said it was so bad that the sun refused to shine. Is this okay, sister? See, I'm, I'm preaching to thousands of people right now. See, this message may not even be for you. This here. But God knows who it's for. Jesus is in the house. Raise your hands all over the building. You've been waiting to call on this man, Jesus. When the sun refused to shine that day, the Bible said the blood. I'm preaching to atheists right now. They don't believe me. Don't even believe in the blood of Jesus. Well, I got some good gospel news for you today. Just because of that blood, I'm here. And just because of that blood that was shed on God, God this hill, these people in here is free. Come on, somebody, and give him praise in the house of glory. Brother Scott, can you feel what I feel? Can you feel what I feel up here, sister? Can you feel it, sister? Hold up, Sunday. Hey, my most I tell you. There you go, sister. Hold up, my Sunday. Hey! My God, my God. I got a witness in the house. See, God always sends you a witness. Like you said, brother, a while ago, when the sister hope you out. I love you, brother. Boy, I'm having fun. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm having fun. There's nothing like serving Jesus. I've tried everything. I've been to every place. I've been locked up in about every jail. Been to prison. They told me I'd never get out. See, there's a price to pay when you run from Jesus. Now I'm going to Jonah now. This is for somebody. I'm not getting away from the cross, though. Let me tell you what happened on God Gotham's Hill over 2,000 years ago. The Bible says that the blood run down the cross. Sister, thank you for that music. Thank you, brothers, for this music. My God, I feel like just dancing in the Holy Ghost. You say, Brother Holmes, ain't you tired? I feel that's supernatural. And this music right here is making me to fall in love with Jesus all over again. See, some of us has left our first love. That's why we can't shout no more. We used to go to churches and shout all night. But Jesus said you lost your first love. We used to go down to Old Hester Town Church. Brother Ronald Scott was my first cousin. His mom and my mama's his sisters. We'd go out there and everybody be said to close. When the Holy Ghost touched one person, he would go all the way down like dominoes. I had a while this sister would get to shouting. I had a while the brother would get to shouting. Then I had a while the whole church would get to shouting. People be praising God. People literally crawling to the altar to get saved. The true living power of Jesus Christ was in the house of God. And that's what we got to get back to today. We got to start praising God because the world is looking at you. The Bible says... Brothers, it's all right. Let me get me just a drink of water right here. One preacher said, I got to get cooled down. The Bible said, did the blood run down? Run down the tree, run down the cross, 
and it went across the rocks. And the Bible said that the ground began to shake. You don't hear this preacher today. And the Bible said there was an earthquake. He said the grounds busted open. And he said the graves busted open. And he said the dead bodies arose and walked into Jerusalem because of the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You can have this power in your life today. They sing a song, what can wash away my sins? What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The preacher said nothing but the blood. How many witnesses in the house? Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Getting back to the store. When I walked in there, the dear girls was in there and they was asking questions. She said, preacher, will y'all remember me in prayer out there when you go? She said, we, we watches it all the time. These are backsliders, sinners. The Lord said, listen. See, a lot of times people tell you to pray for them, you'll say, yeah, I will. Then you'll go home and eat your big steak and go to sleep. That person done asked us to pray for them. The next days come by and you still won't pray. I had a while weeks went by, then I had a while you heard about them getting killed. I was standing in the store and the Holy Ghost said, lay hands on her now. He said, lay hands on her now. I said, baby, give me your hands. And I know she's watching right now because she told me to come today and get me a watermelon. How many like watermelons? Oh, I feel good today. God, thank you for your anointing. But anyway, I laid hands on it and I prayed. It should begin to cry and weep. And she's probably watching right now. Maybe you can get to know this Jesus. You can go free today. All you got to do is say, Lord, Jesus, I'm tired of my sins. I'm tired of walking in darkness. Lord, I'm lost. My heart's broken. I know your heart's broken because you told me so. Matter of fact, she went a little further. She said the devil was trying to get her to kill herself. I rebuke that suicide spirit. Hold up a Sunday head mumbo satire. See, there's all kind of demons out here. You don't know what your family member's facing. You don't know what your husband's facing. You don't know what your wife's facing. You don't know what your kids, your nephews, your granddaughters is facing, your grandsons is facing. But God sent this preacher by to let you know to pray for them, to lift them up in prayer and start rebuking the powers of hell all for our family, giving praise in the house of glory. She said, preacher, she said, yesterday was my son's birthday. She said, he's gone. I won't go in no details. Won't call no names out because we're on television. But God knows all about it. And if she's watching, and I'm pretty sure she are. I want you to stretch forth your hand to this camera and let's pray for this dear sister. You ain't got to kill yourself. You don't have to commit suicide. You can live. Matter of fact, my aunt told me one day I was drinking smearing off vodka. I was standing under her car porch and I never forgot the words she said. She said, son, she said, why don't you take life and live? I said, I will, ain't. But I just didn't know what kind of impact 
them words would take on my life. I left from her house that day, and every time I turned up to take me a drink of that vodka, I could hear my aunt saying, and I can still hear her now, and she's in the polars of glory right now. She said, son, She said, son, she said, take life and live. And that's what I'll say to you today. You that's in this building, take life and live. How do you do it, preacher? You accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you come to Jesus just as you are. The lady at the well... Just let me get cool down a second. Hit it one time, sister. My God, I need this lady to tip. Can I borrow her tonight? Can I borrow her tonight? All of y'all, I need all of y'all at the tip. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But every time I got ready to drink, I could hear my aunt saying, son, take life and live. And them words stuck with me till this day. And you know how long that's been? You know how long that's been? That's been close to 30 years now. And them words are still in my soul. They still in my heart. Take life and live. I'll be going down the road in my truck. And all of a sudden, I hear my aunt say, take life and live. Take life and live. Take life and live. You just watching my television. You just watching my internet. Take life and live. You can live for Jesus. You can have a good life. Jesus didn't promise us a bell of roses, but he said we'd have peace. If Jesus never does nothing else for me, when he filled me with the joy of the Lord. You don't hear this preacher today. When he filled me with the peace of God. Why well, wouldn't I have to shoot drugs in my veins? You don't hear this preacher. Why well, wouldn't I have to wake up and drink Jack Daniels? If he never do nothing else. When he filled me with the peace and the joy of the Lord. No wonder the Bible said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, you got joy? Oh, you got joy today? If you got joy, then you got God's strength. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, you got joy. If you don't have it, you can't have it today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, raise your hands all over the sanctuary. Give God some praise. You say, Brother Holmes, I don't feel like praising him. Well, give him a sacrificial praise. Sing it one time, sister. There you go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Save me. Blood came streaming down. Blood came streaming down. Blood came streaming down. For me. Go ahead, brother. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know he was a blood, save me. Go ahead now. Coming back again. Yeah. Go ahead, sister. Yeah, he's coming back again for me. Go ahead, brother. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. Working power and the blood of Jesus. Well, in the blood of the Lamb, power, power. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise in this house. Sing 
again, brother. Come on, help me, brother. My God, I wish I could see. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's coming back again. Oh, it's just. Praise the Lord in the highest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go with a God. I know it was the blood of Jesus Christ that saved my soul and washed me clean. Amen. Praise God. Listen, this is what the Lord told me. When I was praying, seeking the Lord, what would I preach today? What would I read today? The Lord came me over there. What he said to harvest. Now, I don't know who this is for, but I'm going to say it anyhow. He said the harvest is ready. He said the field is his wife. He said, Lord, tell my people that the harvest is ready. To pray for laborers. Look at your neighbor, saw you praying for laborers. When I was a little boy, we farmed, and they called it sharecroppers. You remember that, don't you, brother? See, you think I ain't that old, but I am. I remember we put into the backer. We had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. We had to take out the backer, put it in the backer, I never could understand it. Why do we have to wake up so early? But Daddy never did call us for one time. And if you didn't get up, see, I'm from the old school. He'd beat your head to death. We was up in Winston Salem. We was on a farm, and as far as you could look, it wasn't up a tobacco rose. We'd get up at four o'clock in the morning. Mama should be in the kitchen. Is this all right? I feel like talking a little bit. Mama would be in the kitchen and mama would be frying some good old ham. She'd be over there frying up some eggs. That was a big family. We was poor, but I didn't know it. We had a bunch of food. And there was all kind of love around the table. Mama would be up cooking. And we would be getting ready. We'd go in there and say our blessings and eat. And go straight to the tobacco barn. We'd take out our barn of tobacco. Go back home and wash our face and hands. And get on the school bus. See these young people today, they don't know nothing but the internet. Every time you look, they're walking down and looking. That's all they know. But we got out and we worked. On Christmas, we didn't have a bunch of gifts, but we had a bunch of fruit. We had apples and oranges. We had pecans. And I never forget, we'd have that peppercorn candy, them, what you call them? Candy cane. There you go, sister. You remember too, don't you? There you go, sister. Coconut bars. Well, we didn't have no coconut bars. But we had that peppermint candy. Bars of candy. But this was years ago. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. We'd go back home. We'd wash our face and hands. We'd get on the school bus. I'd be sitting in my classroom. My daddy always wore boots. And that's probably who I got it from. 
because I've been wearing boots since I was about two years old. I'd be sitting in the classroom, and Mama's probably watching now. She's 82 years old. I'd be sitting in the classroom, and all of a sudden I hear boots coming down the hallway. Now I'm going somewhere if you just listen to me. Give him praise in the house of glory. I'd hear boots coming down the hallway, Brother Scott. At first, I didn't know who it was. Later on, I caught on. When I heard them boots, I knew it was my daddy. He didn't have to sign no papers. He didn't have to beg the principal. He said, I come out of my boys. And he said, matter of fact, I come out of my girls too. They said, hold, Mr. Holmes. You getting your whole family out of school? He said, I'm getting every one of them out. He said, I need them to work on the farm. It's just okay, Bishop. It's just okay, sister. I grabbed my books. We didn't have a bunch of book sacks like they got now. You see kids now, they weighted down like this. It ain't learning a thing. Most of them anyway. The devil's putting it in our kids, and a lot of us is helping him. And I'm not going that route because I'm speaking on the harvest. Daddy would load us all up on the back of that Ford truck and would go back to the farm. I said, my God, we just left this place. Mama would go in there and fix us a sandwich and would start copping the biker. Would work all the way up the dark. Then would take the tobacco and put it back in the barn. Next morning, the biker would be cured out. We'd get up at 4 o'clock again. And we had to do it all over again. I'm going somewhere here. I'd stand on the front porch as a young boy and I'd look across the fields and I could see all the harvest. I could see it just as plain as day right now. We'd set out to the biker and just in a few days it would sprout up. In a few months it would be up high. Then in a while it would be right. We'd have to go out there and crop it. And the Lord showed me and told me to tell you that the harvest is ready, that it's right, and what are you going to do about it? Jesus has never lost his power. He never will. And the devil is a liar. But he said the harvest is right. You remember the lady at the well? I don't know how long I've been preaching, but I still feel anointed. You remember the lady at the well? What did she do? She had a way with men. Matter of fact, Jesus said, how many husbands you got? And y'all know the story. I won't go there neither. And he said, the one you got now ain't showing, but I won't go there neither. But this lady loved Jesus. He changed up. You know what? I preached the message in the penitentiary. Never had been a preacher in the United States of America. Never preached on the yard of the penitentiary. 2,200 inmates and they chose me to preach and I thank God for that opportunity and I give him the praise and glory but listen friend there's people tonight you don't know which way to go your kids is a mess look at your neighbor and say a hot mess and you know what you got the answer it's in your heart Look at your name and say, we got the answer. We got the answer. Sister, you know how you brought your daughter to the tent? See, you're smart. See, you're smart. You know where to bring her to. We won't even carry our kids to the house of God. I won't go there neither. But anyway, the lady at the well, listen, I'm going somewhere. I'm preaching on the harvest, that the harvest is right. Now, Jesus knew this lady would be at the well. He knew, he knows everything. He told his disciples, he said, now you go ahead. He said, I'm going to stay by. They said, Jesus ain't ain't nothing. Jesus, you don't want nothing to eat. Jesus said, no, y'all go ahead. Because he knew there was a woman coming to the well. Jesus know where you're at right now. 
It's just okay. But he made the lady the way on you all of you heard the story. But I preached a message one time that Jesus will meet you right in your mess. This lady's life was a mess just like mine was. Jesus met this lady. He told her, he said, if you drink of this well, this water, you'll thirst again. But he said, if you drink of the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. So Jesus knows all things. This lady got so excited. You don't want me to preach some more, do you? For somebody on television does and somebody on the internet. I'm going to tell them anyhow. But Jesus knew this lady had a way with men. She had been murdered what? How many? Five times. And he said the one you got named to. But I won't go there neither. But I'm going somewhere. Jesus knew this lady had a way with men. And the Bible says that she got so excited that she left her water pots. You go in my house, you don't mess with my wife's pots. You don't mess with her silverware. Some of you ladies know what I'm talking about. You mess with, you mess with a lady's pots, she may want to fight you. Talk to me, sister. Say it again. You in trouble. Because the lady keeps her pots in order. You know what I'm talking about, sister. Matter of fact, I could go home with one somebody right now, me and the wife, and eat me a good cooked meal. Amen, sister said that about the pot. But anyway, listen. The Bible said this lady got all excited. She went back to her home place, and the Bible said she told all of the men. See, she had a way with men, and Jesus knew that. She went back, and the Bible says that she told him, she said, I've met the Messiah. Hold on, my Sunday, I wish I could preach about another hour. She said, hey, come and see a man that's told me everything. Come and see a man that knows everything about my life. Come and see the man, come and meet the man. I've met the Messiah. I've met the Messiah. And all the men got up and said, where is he at? And the Bible said all the men and all the people, they got together and they went to where Jesus was at and Jesus got with them. And the Bible said Jesus stayed with them two or three days. And it ain't no telling how many were saved through this lady at the well. All the disciples come back. They seen Jesus talking to this woman. And this is what Jesus said. He said, y'all go ahead and eat your fish, your seafood. But he said, my meat. Here's where I'm closing out at. I know I've been preaching a long time. But this is for somebody. He said, my meat is to do the will of my Father. Hold up, I shun dead him, I'm most He said, my will is to do the will of my Father. Had the bow shun dead him, I'm most Disciples couldn't figure it out, but Jesus knows all things. And today, if you're watching, he knows everything about your life. He knows when you're peeping and hiding and diving. He knows when you're slipping around. He knows when you're trying to commit adultery. He knows when you're trying to fornicate. He knows when you're trying to hit a crack pipe. He knows when you're running down a pain tablet. He knows when you're running down a Percocet. He knows when you're running down to the liquor house. Is this okay? I'm gonna obey God if I never come back today because I feel God's power. Somebody is getting delivered right now. You can't hide nothing from the eyes of the Lord. The Bible said his eyes is all over the earth and, he, and he's looking and he's seeking. He can see right through you. Is that true, sister? Is that true? So in other words, what you need to do is throw your hands up and say, God, it's me that's standing in the need of a miracle. Lord, I need your blessings. I need for you to touch my life where I can go out and reach the harvest. Because if people don't see God in you, let me go a little further. Some of you's life will be the only Bible some people ever read. 
That's why it's important, no matter where you go, and no matter what you're doing, you present in Christ. You present in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We're supposed to walk around, we're supposed to be the happiest people on this planet. We're supposed to be the happiest people on this earth, not the devil's crowd. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Brother Holmes, you look like you're mighty happy. I said, I'm being consumed with God's power. I'm being consumed with the fire of God. No wonder Jeremiah spoke about it. He said, it's like a burning fire that's shut up in my bones. Other words, he said, I've got to preach this gospel. It will set you free from homosexuality. Oh God, don't go there preaching. Well, I'm going there anyway because the Lord just told me to. If you're a homosexual, we love you too. If you're going the opposite direction, Jesus can turn you around and put you on the right road. We don't hate nobody, but we love everybody. But Jesus knows exactly where you're at, and he's ready to fill you with his spirit. He's ready to fill you with his Holy Ghost. Somebody said, Brother Holmes, every morning I wake up, I got to smoke me a joint of grass. It's just okay, Bishop. I said, brother, all you need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus. I was in Winston-Salem one morning at about three o'clock in the morning. I got a phone call and I was half asleep. I answered the phone, it was my nephew. I don't know how many ounces of grass he was smoking a week. But he was crying over the phone. He said, Unc, I need your help. He said, please, can you come over here right now? I had just moved to Winston-Salem and I didn't know too much about the area, but I told the wife, I said, get up. I said, I'm putting on my boots right now, son. Me and the wife got ready and we tucked out through the dark. We were riding on bike roads that we had never been on before. We turned this way, we was lost. We turned that way, we was lost. I told the wife, I said, I don't know how to get this house. I said, but the Holy Ghost knows exactly where he stays at. I got to pray and I said, Lord, Holy Ghost, lead me to the right road. Send me to the right place, Father. And I had a while, I pulled up in his yard. I gets out, I goes in there. He said, Unc, he said, I don't know, but he said, I feel like I'm fixing to die. Somebody had been praying for him. I had been praying for him. I laid hands on him, me and the wife prayed for him. And listen, God delivered him from marijuana for a long, 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 long time. If God can do that for him, he can do it for anybody. Give him praise in the house of glory. See, the Bible said the weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God in pulling down the strongholds of hell. What's keeping you from praising God? What's keeping you bound? What's keeping you from going to the house of God? What's keeping you from being sanctified? What's keeping you being filled with the Holy Ghost? What's keeping you bound today? They said, boy, don't never get this preacher back over here. That's all right, I got a tent. And I've been in service about 18 days now. So you know what? My message is literally for the world. It's for the church too. But I'm going out and reach the lost. Me and Brother Scott back there started in, when was it Brother Scott, in the 90s? That was 94, me and Brother Scott got the tent and started reaching. And literally hundreds and hundreds of people has been saved through tent revivals. And where we setting up at now, people's crying out for God. There's people that's in trouble today, friend. And you're watching by television. You're just watching by internet. You can get to know this man, Jesus. He will fill you with the glory of God. He will heal that broken heart. It's amazing how Jesus can take a heart that's full of sin, heart of stone. It's amazing how Jesus can reach in and turn it around and fill you with the joy of the Lord. You just watching my television. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your hands all over the house and give him praise in the house of glory. You say, Brother Holmes, you've been preaching a long time. Friend, there's people right now that's got saved while we've been in this building right here. I felt it right here. No one he said, out your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Brother, just clock right. 
I'm getting ready to turn it over to the bishop. I'm getting ready to move out the way. Ever what they do, I'm going to let them do it. But I think the Lord's already done with me here today. I'm going to pray for you too, sister. Matter of fact, I'm going to lay some hands on some people. Is that okay? Hold up a shot. I feel the Holy Ghost. Now listen. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 20, he said, faith without words is dead. You can talk about preaching all you want. You can talk about winning souls all you want. But nothing will never happen till you make it happen. In other words, when Peter was on the boat, Jesus said, come to where I'm at. Jesus, Peter stepped out of the boat and went to Jesus. Some of you need to step out of the boat. Step out of the boat and receive your healing, your deliverance right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Raise your hands all over the place and give him praise. Sister, sing. I'm going to pray with the people, okay? Brother Scott, where's Brother Scott at? Brother Scott, come up here for a minute. In the name of Jesus. You that's watching my television, we're going to be praying for you. Brother Scott, I want you to come up here and help me pray with his sister. Praise the Lord. You're going to be healed in the name of John. Be healed. There you go. There you go. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on the sister. She laid right at your feet. She didn't fall there for nothing. Give him praise in the house of glory. Is there anyone else here tonight, today? You say, Brother Holmes, I want you to pray for me. Come up right now. You say, Brother Holmes, I need healing in my body. You can come up right now and we'll lay hands on you. I got Brother Scott up here. I got the rest of the preachers. You just at home right now, raise your hands right now and receive your miracle. Receive your blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be ye healed. Be ye delivered. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said Isaiah picked it up in 54, 17. He said, no weapon. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. And he said, every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn it, for that is the inheritance of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, self God. Be ye healed in Jesus' name. What about Sean? they hit my most in time. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hold on for a minute. Brother Scott, I brought my own North North. Brother Scott, we're going to pray for this lady. You're going to be healed today. You're going to be healed today in the name of Jesus. You ready to receive it? You ready to receive it, Mama? In the name of Jesus. God, right now, we rebuke these headaches. What about Sunday? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you is a liar. We come against the powers of hell. In no other name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living. In the name of Jesus, give him praise in the house of glory. Hey! In the name of Jesus, praise God. Praise God's going to heal you now. In the name of Jesus. Sister, lay your hands on her back. In the name of Jesus. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Jesus told the blind man, he said, according to your faith. He said, according to your faith. Be it, O top of all Sata. To be it on thee. In the name of all top of Sata. Shanda, hey, mamosataya. 
There you go. In the name of Jesus, the power. Yeah, Momo Shata. In the name of, uh, there you go, sister. I felt it. Uta Momo Shata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come here, sister. What about Shande here, Momo Shataya? Sing it, sister, sing it. How much longer we got? Praise the Lord. Brother Scott. Raise your hand, sister. This is sister got saved under the tent, Brother Scott. How do you feel today? Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Sister, we're going to pray for you for strength. Amen. She, I don't believe she missed a night under that tent. A lady come there broken hearted. tired of sin. It's amazing how God can change your life. Hold up. Receive the blessings of God. Strength. In the name of Jesus, go out and tell somebody what happened, sister. Jesus said, we're well, overcomers by testimony and by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ giving praise in the house of glory. You remember what happened to the man that lived amongst the tombs? And the Bible says when he seen Jesus stepped out of the boat, he run to where Jesus was at. And the Bible says when Jesus got ready to leave him, he wanted to go and get on the boat with Jesus. And what did Jesus tell him? He said, go back home to your family. He said, go back home to your family. Go back home and tell your friends what a marvelous thing's happened to you. You need to get out of that couch. You need to get off the couch. Maybe somebody is in the couch. Maybe you're in the bed. The devil's been holding you back. You'll shut the blinds up. You'll close the curtains. You in the state of depression. The devil's told you to end your life. What you need. What you need to do is jump up over that bed and jump up over that couch and say, devil, you is a liar. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going out. And let me tell you where it's going to start at. It's going to start with your testimony. You're going to start telling people what Jesus has done in your life. Just like he told the man that's called Legion, that laid in the graveyards and nobody could tame him. Nobody could handle him. The Bible said he would break chains asunder. He scared everybody off the island. Every time a ship rolled in, he would run out like a crazy man. But when Jesus stepped out on the island, he run all right. He runs straight to the Savior. No wonder they call him Savior. No wonder they call him peace. No wonder they call him the heal, the healer. No wonder they call him the deliverer. My God, I feel like preaching a little bit. But either way, the man, he was delivered. And Jesus said, now go back home. Some of you need to go back home. You've been running with the world. You ain't got no peace in your life. You left your mama's house. You left your daddy's house. They was feeding you three meals a day. Matter of fact, they was giving you money every Friday. You didn't like that. The devil told you to get out on your own. Now look at you today. But it's not over till Jesus says it's over. You can go back home. Some of you is a prodigal son. You know what happened to the prodigal son? What happened? The Bible said he took all his money. And he wasted it to the world. But guess what he done? When he got down in the hog pen, that's another message. When he got down in the hog pen, the Bible said his man, his mind goes back. He said, my God, he said, I can get up. I can go back to my father's house. And he said, I can be a servant and I can do better than this here. I know the devil was talking to him. I know the devil said, your daddy don't want to see you. Your mama don't want to see you. But anyway, he muscled up. He put his feet in front of one another and he said, I'm going back to my father's house where everything's clean, where the peace of the God is, where the peace of the Lord is, where their food is. And the Bible said his father seen him coming a far away. I wish I had the strength to preach the way I feel. The Bible said when his father seen him coming, 
He said, listen, get back to and kill the fattest cow for God. See, this is what Jesus does. Jesus will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy. He said, go kill the fattest cow. His other brother said, for what, daddy? He said, go, look, come in here. He said, there come a son. My God, I wish I could preach it just five more minutes. He said, there come a son that once was lost, but now he's found. He once was blind, but now he see. My God from heaven, there's somebody today that's watching. You left your father's house, which is God Almighty. And Jesus is saying, come on back. Come look at your neighbor and say, come on back home. And the Bible said his father took him, put a robe around him, put a ring on his finger. He said, son, I've always loved you. He said, I've been praying for you a long time. He said, I've been looking down that dirt road every day. And he said, I know one day I'll see you coming. No doubt his son looked at him and said, Daddy.